So in the last 20 plus years, I have glued up thousands, and I do literally mean thousands of panels, whether they're tabletops, end tabletops, sofa tabletops, or side panels for cabinets. You name it, I've glued it up. And I've done it all without one single store-bought clamp. I used clamping boards, or what I call clamping boards, and it's a very simple build. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can make your own clamping board and never have to worry about buying those really expensive clamps again. This is what it looks like. It's a pretty simple build. Let's get started. I'm cutting up some maple for the slats on my clamping board. Now, I don't necessarily care to use something so heavy. I like to use a medium density material like poplar, but maple's what I've got. What I've got here are some slats that I've cut to 3 8 They're a little bit longer than my board. I'm gonna cut them down to size. And I've got another two pieces that are cut at an inch and an eighth. And then I have a couple other pieces that are cut a little wider than that. I think these are inch and 3 8 And we'll get to those here in a minute. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is take my inch and an eighth piece and I'm gonna cut it to size to match the width of my board. And I'm just gonna glue it and screw it down at the end here. And then I'm gonna cut my four slats and I'm gonna install one on each end and two roughly in the middle. Now with this, uh, a general rule of thumb is every seven to eight inches is a good gap or a good spacing for uh, the clamping board. So I'm cutting everything to length on the chop saw. I'm cutting both the front and back piece and all four slats, and I'm doing it all at one time. So on the pieces that go on the front and back, I'm gonna pre-drill three holes, and then I'm gonna glue these down. And I'm using CA gel and activator, it's 2P10. And I'm gonna use activator just to speed this process up. So I just hold it in place for about five seconds, 10 seconds, and then I can run my screws in. Now, I did not have the right size screws. They ran through the plywood, so I'm just using an angle grinder with an aggressive sanding disc to take off the little bit that stuck out. With that done, I'm gonna add my slats, and I ran out of 2P10, so I'm using wood glue. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of wood glue on the bottom and then I'm gonna use a 23 gauge brad nailer to hold it in place while it dries. Now wood glue or CA gel, it's a, either one is a fine application for this. It doesn't necessarily have to be either one. And once I had all the slats in place, I just went and rounded everything over with a quarter inch round over because I'm gonna be handling this a lot. I don't want a lot of sharp edges. And then I just drilled out a hand position. And I connected the two holes that I made and then cut it out with my little jigsaw. And this is just so I can hang it on the wall and I can also carry it around. And then routed out that little hole I cut with a quarter inch round over to make it comfortable. Now this step is completely unnecessary, I just felt like putting some Danish oil on something, so I did. And once it had dried, I used some regular like Christmas paper, scotch tape, uh, and I'm just going to put that over the top of each of these slats. And I want to do this before I do the next step, because I don't want to get wax on the slats. <laughs> just kidding, I won't use my knife. So I'm going to put, the, I made sure to put the tape on first and then I'm going to wax the surface below that and that's just going to help any glue squeeze out that drips through will be able to get cleaned off of that wax real easy because glue doesn't want to stick to wax. Now these two pieces right here are actually span over the top of the glue up and you'll see me use them later in this build. So I'm just pre-drilling some holes where some screws are going to go and then I cut another piece of maple and then I cut it into three small sections that are about two inches sh sh um, shorter than the gap between each slats and then drilled some holes in them and then countersunk afterwards. So I'm just gonna add some screws to the holes that I just cut. And the last thing I need to do is cut some wedges. Now I cut these over on the bandsaw off camera, but you'll see what, how I use them here in a minute. Now with everything done, I'm using some store-bought one by four. I did not dress this at all. I just used them right straight from the store. I screwed the blocks in about an eighth of it to a quarter inch gap away from the glue up. And then I just shoved the wedge in between the block and the top piece. It is important that the wedges be made out of some kind of soft wood. I'm using a Clorox bleach pad to clean up the squeeze out glue. And then I'm adding my crossbars. Now these crossbars are gonna help me keep everything nice and flat across the top. If there's any variance, I can actually use a small wedge to um, close up any gap. So if one board is just a touch higher than the other, I can use a wedge to close up that difference. 
and that way I don't have to use biscuit joints or uh, biscuits or splines or festool. So that's a clamping board. Now you can make these any size that you need them and you don't necessarily have to use plywood. There's another method that I'll show in an upcoming video, probably in a week or two, about how you can make a clamping board without any plywood because I know in some places plywood is prohibitively expensive. Here it's not so bad. So this is a really simple solution to not having clamps. Another nice thing about this is you can just glue up your top, push it out of the way, grab your, grab your next clamping board and do your next one. And that's really nice in a production setting. So I want to say thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found this video useful, you know what to do. Thumbs up. Also, if it's your first time here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Lots more fun stuff coming down the pipe. And if you're not new here, you know I love you.